to be some of the things of these songs the way we sing them, you know? I mean, they can be, hear them all the time. Sometimes I take them for granted. But I, since, I, since, I, since they kicked me out of the band, the, you know, I, I just have a different appreciation for the, for the music now. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you do too, yes. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to June. Um, everybody got a bulletin? Camilla? You sound awesome, young lady. You're awesome. We'll take that replacement any day. Um, okay, 10 a.m. Sunday school in the bulletins. There's worship services at 11-ish, as you're finding out if you're visitors. We have San Hollow time. I don't know what it is, but you get out... It, it just works that way for everything. I don't know what it is. We're just not that excited about doing. Anyways, after ch- after church, we do. If you haven't had your picture taken, I think Caitlin's going to be back and and uh, go ahead and get him done. Um, let's see. Uh, praise team practice on Wednesday. Um, next Sunday, same thing. We got Sunday school at at ten. It's not ten ish. You know, I just start when everybody gets here. Uh, There's no potluck next week. Um, What we're going to try to do is we're going to have potluck on Father's Day Sunday. So I think that would be in the the 19th is is Father's Day. So we'll have potluck that day. There's a fifth Sunday love offering. This month's fifth Sunday love offering. We'll go to children's ministry. Wasn't that last month? Or is that in June? That was... If you have a heart to, to turn in a May envelope, then, then please do. Uh, June 9th at 7 p.m., there's going to be a VBS meeting at the church. And then don't forget, on the 20th and the 24th, VBS, uh, as we've been saying, just invite kids. Prayer requests, um, please keep praying for Jake. Pray for Sandy. I'm not sure. I haven't heard how she's doing today, but she's having a hard time with her ears. Yeah. And afraid they're going to have to put tubes or something there to drain them. That, that doesn't sound very fun. Uh, be praying for Tiffany's dad, who's got bronchitis. And, and uh, um, Josh, the husband of Amy's friend. And then Brittany and Shelby, for sure. Be praying for the First Baptist Church. <coughs> and, uh, and Justin, Diana's friend. And uh, those are some of the prayer requests. How is... Yeah, okay. And there's a, a Facebook page called New Plymouth First Baptist Rebuild. We will be able to keep track of the needs and progress of our extended church family um, moves forward through this trial. You know, they, they had a service there last week, and some people said that it, they didn't think the place was big enough. And I talked to Phil. All those cars in there was like sardines. There's, so they're going to land up having to do like two or three services to to accommodate all the people. So... Hopefully they can get that, get that rolling. Um, let's see. We've got the box over here. The, the plaid box is for the Boise Rescue Mission. There's a list of things that they're always needing. Somebody gave me like four cases of laundry soap. And so each case has got like 12 boxes in it. So please, there's some over there. Take, take one home with you, please. And, uh, and you know, the... It says on the box that it's, it's supposed to be good stuff. I don't know. It's free. And, and it'll, one box will do like 36 loads. But we're giving a case to the Boise Rescue Mission. And if you guys want some, trust me, Joel and I, we got our box. So you guys can, can have your box. Um, anything else? Any announcements? What am I missing? Yes. Huh. Right. Hmm. Right, yeah, she's kind of... You bet. Because so Patricia's been sort of 
getting uh, a little Alzheimer's or something like that. Or yeah. Wow. And how and how's Steve doing? Good. Well, good. 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 Well, we'll keep we'll keep Patricia in our prayers. Just a great saint that lady is. Any other anything else? Paul, it's good to see you this morning. Missed you yet last week. Oh, you were here last week? Oh, I missed you last week. I might not have been here. How you doing, Nathan? Welcome to San Hall Baptist Church. You've been here before, haven't you? No? Well, hey. You know, I'll tell you what, the bathrooms are over there. The, the kitchen's in there. If you want anything, help yourself. If, if you don't see what you want, bring it next time, because we might want it too. Welcome, welcome to our humble little church. And Rich, it's, it's nice to see your girlfriend with you this morning. I mean, Rich, how do you do that, man? You're surrounded by all these beautiful women. <laughs> I, bet it, I bet it does. <laughs> all right. Is there any anniversaries? Any anniversaries this week or whatever? None? Any birthdays? No birthdays. I thought somebody was going to have a birthday last week, but we decided to sing it this week. They didn't show up. Who was that? I did, didn't I? I can't. Oh. Oh, with Diane. We sing happy birthday. Okay. No birthdays. <coughs> wow. That's unusual. What am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something. Amy, Joellen, the front of the church looks awesome. Thank you for doing that, for uh, putting the bark all down and then changing it with the seasons, the flowers and stuff. It looks, looks nice. Now, I've got, I sprayed the weeds, and if you notice, they're growing really good out front. I don't understand it because it's like one dead weed, one live weed. I mean, I don't know. Blame it on the rain. Yeah, I, I should have paid more attention to the farmers telling me how to kill the weeds 20 years ago. Anyway, let's pray. Do you want to pray? What's that? Spray him again and again and again. That's, I guess. All right, well, Heavenly Father, we do come before you and thank you for your goodness and your kindness. We thank you for what you did on the cross for us for uh, our opportunity to enter into the kingdom of, of spending forever with you. We, we just thank you so much for that. We have no other words than thank you and praise you. We love you. Uh, Father, this morning as the little ones go into their uh, classroom, I pray that you would uh, speak to their hearts, that you would speak to the hearts of those who are, who are teaching and, and tending to them. And, uh, and Lord, we just want them to know who you are and how to and how to find uh, and how to find you, Father. We want to lift up Jake today and just ask that you um, draw him near to you, uh, Lord. We ask for Sandy that you would heal Sandy's ears, and and Tiffany's dad's, um, uh, Kevin his bronchitis, and Josh. I'm not really sure what's going on there, Lord, but you do, and you know you know uh, the situation with Brittany and Shelby, Father. We just ask that you would intervene and. Uh, and just continue to draw them uh, unto yourself as well. And we lift up our brothers and sisters at the First Baptist Church in New Plymouth, Father, and, and ask that they would just uh, continue to trust you and, and to keep continuing good spirits and, uh, and just uh, the adventure that you're uh, having, them, having them on. And Lord, we do lift up Justin, Diana's friend. And Father, I, we want to lift up our dear sister, uh, Patricia, to you, uh, Sarah's mom, as she lost her brother, um, and Father, we just ask that you would comfort her heart. And, uh, and you know, and I pray for all of those around who are, who are dealing with Patricia as she seems to be uh, slipping in her memory and stuff a little bit, that, that you just be with them and their patience and uh, an understanding and just continue to love um, and love Patricia as, uh, as you do. So, uh, so Father, we thank you for the, all the opportunities that you give us. Uh, the people out here who are going to hear the message this morning, open, open their hearts to what you have to say.
Father, and I pray that you would uh, speak to your people this morning in a mighty way. We just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Doyle, you got kids? You think so. The rest of these want to open up your Bible to Matthew chapter 7. You know, uh, I put in my notes here right away that these next few passages in Matthew chapter 7 should scare us to death. Okay, they should, I don't know if they should scare us to death, but they, sh- they should definitely make you think, make you, uh, make you wonder. Today, we're going to, last week we talked about there's only one way to get to get into to the Lord. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody gives to the Father except through me. And that's pretty narrow-minded, isn't it? Huh? Listen, we, in study school today, we were kind of talking about, there's, there's all kinds of ways to get there, what people want to believe, but we know better. We know better because we, we have the book. We have God's inspired word. Listen, if you're here today, you're the only people Christians are the only ones who, who, who read the B-I-B-L-E are the only ones who have the inspired Word of God. Now, there's a lot of other good writings out there, but it's not inspired by God. You know, in Hebrews, it tells us that the Bible is living and active. God's Word, it's sharper than a double-edged sword. Okay? You can have a million books in your library and one Bible, and I'm telling you, there's only one book that has the power to change your heart and your life. And just not yours, but your families or anybody else who will pick it up and read it. He tells us that there's only one way to God. I'm not telling you that. Don't be mad at me. I like the idea of a whole bunch of ways. I like the idea of having a wide road. It sounds good. It sounds promising. It doesn't sound very painful. Right? But that's not what Jesus said. That's not what he said. He says there's just one way. Don't be confused. Don't let the adversary mix you up. Don't let the world trip you and confuse you. Listen, don't let your own heart confuse you about the reality of that truth. Is that there's just one way. Jesus says that the gate is narrow to, to paradise, basically. But the road to destruction is wide. And, and many are going down that road. Not a whole lot of people are going down the narrow road. It's hard. How narrow-minded, again, right? Especially the more progressive we get. How narrow-minded to think that there's only one way. How could you serve a God who would say He's the only way? Well, I don't know about you, but I have tried all the other things. And this way has been the way that He has done for me in my life exactly what he said he would do. He's never left me. He's never forsaken me. He's brought me out of the, out of the mud and the muck and the mire and uh, placed me in Santa Hollow. I mean, you know, you can't have everything just the way I want it, but we serve a good God. Um, these these next, few, next few passages, I really want us to hear these because not only does he say that he is the only way, He's warning us today about the naysayers. <laughs> in my Bible, it's, it's entitled, The True and False Prophets and Teachers. Okay? This is where we get in trouble. I don't know, many of you guys might be too young to remember Jim Jones. Okay? There was a lot of people who really bought into him. And he was a good, dynamic speaker. He could make, he, he could make you believe what, what he was saying was true. It, but, but it wasn't true. Okay, there's, there's tons of faiths. Uh, I'm not going to sit up here and be, I don't want to be a faith basher, a church basher or whatever, but listen, there's a lot of really well-known <coughs> denominations that uh, they're blowing it. They're not teaching us. And you, know, and, and you can ask, how do you say that, Pastor? When I turn on the TV and watch the church channel, right, and there's a, an openly gay man on the pulpit preaching, 
bragging about how he's married to his husband, we got a problem, people. We got a problem. Somewhere along the line, we have lost track of what the book said. We stopped trusting in what God said and trusting in what our own heart says and what our own mind wants. And again, the Bible, if we're reading the book, the Bible will tell us, men, our hearts will lead us astray. Our hearts and desires will kill you at the end of the day. Hey, these can be some of the scariest words to hear in these next few deals. Because I'm going I'm to ask a question. Anyways, let's go right to the word. In chapter 7, verse 15, he says, after he tells us that there's only one way, he starts off and says, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are fierce wolves. But their fruit, you will recognize them. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. You know what? Jesus alerts us. To watch out for false prophets and false teachers. Okay? You know what? Throughout the Bible, as a matter of fact, people are warned about false prophets and false teachers. You can go to Ezekiel 13. You can go to 2 Peter. You can go to Matthew 24, 20, Matthew 27. Over and over and over again, we're, we're cautioned. We are, we, are, we are asked to beware of false teachers. Listen, a false prophet claimed to speak for God, but they speak falsehood. Okay? Jim Jones, I used him. He was, he was a dynamic speaker. He, he, he was a dynamic speaker. I've listened to him. And if you're not careful, if you don't know your book, you can buy some of the things they're saying. If you don't know the book. You know, <clears throat> this comes at a really great time when I was shared with you last week how one of Joe Allen's book clients left the church that she was attending. She finally, she made, she made the move. She left. Because they're teaching a de um, deconstruction theory. They're teaching that God's truth isn't really the truth. I mean, the truth could be whatever you want. It's heresy. Do you see where you can get in trouble with that? And there, this is a church right here in the valley that's teaching this stuff. And people are buying it up, sucking it up. Because it's something new. It's something different. It's something... It's easy for me if I don't believe that there's any kind of absolute for to take my little things that I like and say it's godly when it's not. Got to be so careful. She said these people are great speakers, likable people, but they're teaching the wrong thing. You know, we start following the wrong thing long enough and you know what we get? You get on a Sunday morning evangelist show an openly gay pastor up trying to tell you how to live a better life we got to be careful we got to be careful listen these people these people do whatever is needed to gain a hearing um, they come to people in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are fierce wolves I think of I know some people might be bad at me about saying this but I think of Joel Olstein the smiling pastor. Okay, have you ever listened to this man speak? Have you ever listened to his stuff? You've got to be careful. Joel Olstein has said that the LDS church and, and uh, the Christian church are on the same are on the same level. They're on the same gig here. Untrue. Okay, he he's saying this because he don't want to tick people off. Listen, I don't want to tick anybody off either. That's why what I try to do is tell you what the book says. If you want to be ticked off at anybody, be ticked off at God. Because he's the one who wrote it. And he just gave me the job to tell it, tell it how it says and what it says. And that's what I'm going to do. As you can see, we have a lot of empty chairs because I can tick people off. <laughs> is it me that ticks it off or is it the word that ticks, tick, ticks them off? Is it the truth? That ticks them off. Because that's what we try to preach here. Is what's in the book. Listen, my ideas and my, my feelings and all that don't play any role in this at all. Okay? Um, 
This is, this is God's word. This is God's word. Listen, no matter how innocent and harmless these teachers appear on the outside, they have the nature of a wolf. Okay? Listen, they are intent on destroying faith, causing spiritual carnage in the church, and enriching themselves. That's what a false teacher does. That's what a false prophet does. It might start off with, you know, something about the Lord or something of this, but it always turns into something, something different. And generally, something that's going to boast them up, bring them up. I mean, the, that wacko in Texas, in, wacko, in Waco, Texas. I mean, again, there was a great speaker. <coughs> On the surface, you think that he's, he's going to help you get to heaven. That really, but all he was trying to do is to get your wife and daughters into his bed. That's what he was trying to do. Wolves, man. Wolves. And you know what it, just, what it does with people like that? Is it makes the rest of the people who really do have a relationship with the Lord, it makes you look foolish, don't it? It makes you look stupid. It makes you... Uh, just, nothing makes me madder than that. Nothing made me madder than going and seeing Benny Hinn. I'm throwing his name out here because he'd done this. Who had a stack full of money on the table. All these poor people bringing up this money because he's convinced them that if you give that money on that table, he's going to lay his hands on it and the Lord has given him the power to triple bless you. You know, and at the end of the day, the old lady, she, she's, uh, she's eating macaroni and cheese because she doesn't have any money to pay her power bill or buy her food. The most honest thing I'd ever heard a pastor say is that, hey, if you put money in this bucket, you don't have money no more. Right? I'm not going to tell you that the Lord is going to give you $20 because you put 10 in there. That's not what the book says. He says that he promises to bless you. It doesn't say he's going to bless you 20 times fold with a pocket full of money. Now, he might. He ain't ever done that for me. But, uh, again, we've got to be careful of these people because they sound so good. On that Christian channel, we can listen to Cliff Roll Dollar or whatever. I mean, come on. With a name like Dollar. On a TV evangelist show. Right? Cliff Roll Dollar. The guy's got a great message. Until the end. Until the end of his message. Instead of taking you to the feet of Jesus, what he does is bring you to the dish. He wants to see how much money you want to be worth in a couple years or whatever. Every time. Those guys are false teachers. And this is the guys who's wearing these bling blings. They got those $2,000 suits. And they're ministering to a bunch of people who are in rags. Why would we buy that? Why do we buy into that? Somebody was saying, well, they got to be doing something right, Pastor, because their church is so big. I'm going to tell you one to be aware of, and that's that Hillsong Church. We've have some, I've dealt with some students who come from, from there. And uh, what they're teaching there is not what I've been taught in the Bible. Okay? The stuff that these kids were coming back to sharing with us is not stuff that was in the book. They've been, led to, they've been led to go to a false prophet. They've been, they've been listening to false teachers. And we wonder why our country, our homes, our communities are in the dis, dis ramble that they are. As we have these people who we trust, who you trust, to give you and feed you God's word. And what do they do? They lead you somewhere other than the path that the Lord is saying to be on, man. It's always, if... Jesus and. It's always Jesus and. I'm here to tell you this morning, the Lord said that there's only one way. He is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. If anybody tells you any other message than that, <coughs> excuse me, he's a liar. He's a liar. And he does not have your best interests in heart. He does not have your best interests in mind. Read your book. I'm going, to con I'm going to lose my place in my notes. All right. They usually, false teachers, usually are not upfront about what they believe. Rather, they mix in some truth with falsehood. 
and, and carefully choose their words to sound orthodox. Okay, there's a lot of really smart people who can use some $100 words, and it seems like the, the mankind likes those big words. Ooh, it must be holy if he's using this word. I don't know what it means. Needless to say, the Bible's written in a sixth grade reading le level. I mean, you don't have to read any better than a sixth grader to be able to read the, any, any book, any, any translation of the Bible. Well, maybe the King James. You might have to be a scholar for that one, or a poet or something. But listen, we live in 2022. You can read the book, and it's in there. Anyways, listen, and, it is, and, in, and in reality, they follow their own ungodly desires. And I'm not just pulling that out. You can look in Jude 1, 17 and 18 that talks about that. And, and, it, and it says, and they never stop sinning. They, they seduce and the unstable. They are experts in greed. Go to 2 Peter 3.14. So we've been warned a lot about these people. By contrast, listen to this. A true prophet teaches God's word fully. In Deuteronomy 18.20. Wolves in sheep's clothing twist God's word to deceive or influence the audience for their own benefit. And their own purpose. Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. And, and the ministers, and his ministers, Satan's ministers masquerade themselves as servant of righteousness. Okay? So even the devil can masquerade and, 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 you know, look one way, but really be the other. I was really brought to my, to my, uh, to my attention of the, the Lord going to the, the desert after he was baptized. And I want you to hear me. When the Lord was being tempted by the devil as he was being baptized, did, did he come up with new stuff to, to, to defeat the enemy? No. He used God's word. He used God's word. The devil knows a little bit of God's word, but the Lord, who's actually pinned it, he knew it all. Listen, you and I aren't any different. There is no new way to defeat this stuff. There is no new way to do any of it. God's word, if we have God's word memorized, you can stand up against anything. But you know what? Um, that, that nut bag, that, uh, he, he, didn't, he didn't want, want that. That Koresh guy, the guy over in... Jim, James Jones, he, that's not what they wanted. They wanted, they wanted their, their to be Joseph Smith. He wanted him to be set up higher. And Joseph Smith actually succeeded in doing it. He has is, he is tricked lots and lots of people. You know, lots of people. <clears throat> okay, where am I at? The best way to guard against wolves in sheep clothing is to heed the warning of scriptures and know the truth. Okay? You've got to know the truth. A believer who correctly handles the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15, and carefully studies the Bible will be able to identify false prophets. If we, you don't know if what someone's, you don't know if what I'm telling you is, is, is right or wrong just because I'm telling you. Go home, look. That's what the Bereans did. I mean, they, they, were, they were counted as righteous people because they tore the scriptures apart trying to figure out if what Paul was saying was true or not. That should be our heart. You know, the other day when we talked about, Gracie, you remember, about seeking? That's seeking. You're going home and you're tearing it apart. You're finding out, okay, what does it say? So, so when some, somebody comes up and tries to tell me something, I will know. Should I listen to him or not? And if they're telling you anything different than what you find in the Bible, you do not listen to them. There isn't nothing new under the sun, people. The Lord didn't come to any one of us and say, Ooh, I got a, I got a better way I want you to go tell everybody. No. It's the same way. It's always the same way. The message can never, ever change. Every time we have changed the message, man, we're off in some foreign country drinking poison. Okay? The message is the same. Know your book. Get in your Bible. Come to Sunday school. Question. That's where you question. In Sunday school and in small groups. That's where you, that's where you, you the Bible says iron sharpens iron. 
You know, that's where we, that's our training ground. And then the time comes. You trust me. Trust me, whether you're training or not, you are, you are um, put in a position all the time on you have to divide, okay, is what this person saying of God or is this person saying of themselves or the devil? Okay? Be in your book. You'll know, you'll know then. Listen, Christians must judge all teachings against what Scripture says. Judge my teaching against what Scripture says. Okay? I, want, I don't want to be up here teaching something that's not, that's not right. That's not, I don't even know if orthodox is the right word. I don't want to be up here leading you people astray. And how will you know if I'm doing that or not? If you're not reading the book. If you're not seeking him. If you're not talking to him. If you don't have your own. We took it down, man. I don't know why we took it down. When you don't have your own rich relationship with God. You can get duped. And you probably will be duped. And then what happens when we get duped at the very least? <coughs> I don't want to go hang out with those guys. Those guys are nuts. And then anybody who comes to you with the gospel, they're nuts, man. I remember the James Jones guy. Man, that, that, that stuff's crazy. I don't want nothing to do with it. No. We got to know. You got to know your book. And you got to judge everything from what the scripture says. And believers will also be able to identify false prophets by their fruit. Um, again, I gave a few examples, in my opinion, of, of, some, of these, some of these TV evangelists, man, who, uh, I mean, I don't know what they think. They come on here with these shows with this, you know, like I said, a $2,000 shoot suit. They got all these airplanes. They got all this money, all this stuff. They're just fleecing the people, Right? But some people will say, oh, well, they've got 10,000 people in the church. They must be doing something right. Say, so, yeah, they're, they're doing something right, all right. They figured out how to get all your money is what they're doing. And they're leading all of you guys right down to hell. Now, shame on him. I'm going to say shame on us for not knowing what the book says, for not being able to call it out from what, right away. We should be able to call it out. If you notice, not everybody went to those churches. Because there's still that people who are on that narrow path who read God's word, who believe every word that the Bible says. Even if we don't understand it all, I believe it. <clears throat> Believers will also be able to identify false prophets by their fruit, their words, action, and lifestyle. Jesus says a tree is recognized by its fruit. Um, Peter described false teachers as having depraved conduct and who carouse as slaves of depravity. In 2 Peter 2, 2, you can find that in 2 Peter 13, 19. If a teacher is in the church, does not live according to God's word, he is one of those wolves in sheep's clothing. You see, it's really hard, I think. I think sometimes we can do more damage. We kind of touched base this a little bit in Sunday school and uh, about... Okay, I'm going to tell Henry how to live as a good Christian man, and I'm not even living as a Christian. I mean, that's a hypocrite. That's, that's, Peter calls that a wolf. I mean, I need to practice what I preach. And in the reality, before I ever have any effect on Henry or anybody, man, Henry needs to be able to see. Dallas practices what he preaches. Okay, Dallas, Dallas practices what he preaches. Now, maybe Dallas should practice other things and preach different. <laughs> I'm not, not going to say that, but listen, we practice what we preach. We, uh, that, we, we got we to gotta be that way. I mean, and that's if you're going to teach in Sunday school or what, anything. We've got we to be doing that, practicing uh, what we are. He, listen, here are, here are three specific questions to identify false prophets or wolves in sheep's clothing. One is, well, what does the teacher say about Jesus? Okay. In John 10, 30, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. Okay? The Jews understood Jesus' statement as a claim to be God and wanted to stone him for it. John 10, 33. Anyone who denies Jesus as Lord, 1 John 4, 1, 3 says, is a false prophet. As a matter of fact, in Romans, he says that the, uh, the way to be saved is to confess with your heart that, that Jesus is Lord or confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you're saved, it says. 
Jesus is, is our Lord. Anybody who denies that is a false prophet, is a false teacher. Number two, does the teacher preach the biblical gospel? Anyone who teaches an incomplete or unbiblical gospel is to be eternally condemned. In Galatians 1.9, any gospel apart from what the Bible tells us is not the true good news. That's my problem with Joseph Smith. That's my problem with a lot of these other, these other people who claim to have the only way, the only true church. It's not what the Bible says. There's only one way. There's only one good news, people. There's only one good news, and that is that God loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son to die on a cross, suffer a criminal's death, if you will, so you might have eternal life. He says whoever believes in him will have eternal life. That's the good news. Okay? They thought that they were killing Jesus. <laughs> That's not what happened. They, 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 he, he, they, 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 they crucified him. They put him in a tomb. And on the third day, he was rose again, just like he told his people he would. That's the good news. And if you believe that, you too will one day rise again too. Listen, one of, the, one of the things that I've had to learn kind of the hard way, and, I, and it's hard as a preacher because we want to tell people, hey, give your heart to the Lord. Everything will be great. But what a lie that is. Okay? Nothing here on earth is going to be great ever. Give your heart to the Lord, and you know what? You'll be able to muck through this life, but eternity is yours. Eternity of paradise. That's what, that's what I'm seeking. My hopes for is for what happened after here. Okay, Jesus promises us that we will be with him in paradise. That's a promise. That's a promise I want to hang on to. I tell everybody living another day in paradise, but I really don't think that this is paradise, folk. I don't think this is hell either. <laughs> okay, hell's a lot different than this. A lot different than this. All right, third thing. Does the teacher exhibit godly character qualities? Jesus said to beware of teachers whose moral behavior does not match what the Bible says. He says we will know wolves in sheep's clothing by their fruit. It doesn't matter how large a church a preacher has, or how many books he has sold, or how many people applaud him. If, the teachers, if he teaches a different doctrine, and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that um, accords with good godliness, then he is a wolf in sheep's clothing. And you know what, folks? We need to get rid of the wolves. We need to... Yeah, I, I can't, what i got to say is I, I know you can't go out and beat up all the pastors and run them off the church, but you know what? I don't have to sit under anybody like that. And neither do you. You do not have to sit under anybody who's not teaching you sound doctrine. You're foolish to do it in, 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 in a lot of ways. Because I believe here in the valley for sure, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of places that are teaching sound doctrine. There's a lot of people who, who do got it figured out, who do love you enough to, to want to shepherd you and, and teach you and, 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 and disciple you into being more and more like Jesus the older that you get. There are. There are some bad ones. But there's a lot of good ones. That's who you deserve to sit under. That's who you must sit under. If not, man, you're going to come up home one day with some weird doctrine. Okay? Ooh, I got to I gotta ask Jesus to come into my heart, and then I got to give Pastor Dallas $10,000, and I'll get to heaven. I like that. But it's not true. So if I ever start telling you that, just take me out and beat me up. Okay? I'm just telling you now. Beat me up. Because as bad as you want to get to heaven, as bad as you want to have that rich relationship, and, 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 and hear those words one day, well done, my good and faithful servant, I want to hear them too. And if you know that I'm teaching something false, and you don't confront me, shame on you. Same as if I think that you're out peddling something false and I don't confront you, shame on me. We're in this together. And I think the, the, the tighter we get, 
the more we come together, I think the better we can, uh, we can, you can prevent a lot of this from happening. It's unnecessary, isn't it? Isn't it Paul said, why do we forsake the gathering? You know, there's a reason why we gather. There's a reason why we have Sunday school. There's a reason why you have VBS. There's a reason why you have small groups. They're, they're all for a reason. And I believe, as I said a minute ago, it's to sharpen one another. Listen, I have learned tons around the tables from, from, from you people. And uh, I think that's one of the ways that we're going to prevent this from, from happening to us. Okay? I'm not sure what Phil's going to do or Richard or any of these other people, but I know what we're going to do. We're going to continue to offer tables with the book open where we can come around and we can start sharpening each other. We can work out our salvation together. Do you know false preachers? Do you know any false prophets? Here's a question. Are you a false teacher or a false prophet? Are you the person that we should be afraid of? I hope not. But that's a question I think that you and the Lord should, should ponder. Am I got this right? Am I doing this right? I think, the, I, think, I think the reality of the consequences are too great not to ask that question. Eternities for a long time. A long time. All right? Where do you want to be at? Which side of that do you want to be at? Um, I didn't do a very good job today showing you what's going to happen to these false teachers, but it isn't nice. It isn't good. Okay? These false prophets, they do not have the same future as you and I do if we heed to, to the good, godly principles. Tough questions, aren't they? Next week's going to be tougher. Want me to tell you what it's going to be? You know what next week is? It's because next week, Henry, what the Lord is saying is that, you know what? There's going to be many, many people who are going to come to me and say, Oh, Lord! I, I, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. And you know what the Lord says to them? Come on, you guys know what he says. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I know not who you are. Those words scare me to death. What if I think I got something here? Huh? What if I think I'm on the right path here? Just to find out. Nope. You don't. You know, how disheartening is that? Bobby, I don't even know who you are. Hmm. Bow your heads with me, please. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for giving us a word. Thank you for allowing us to live in a country, Father, where, where it's almost mandatory that we learn how to read. And, and Father, I thank you for um, not only the people who helped me learn to read, but Lord, for the people who, who brought your truth into my life for me to read. And I thank you, Father, for, 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 for the Holy Spirit that, that your book says come upon me that has helped me understand what I'm reading and what to do with it in my life. And Lord, I pray that, that the people that are listening this morning, that they would invite the Holy Spirit to come into their hearts and their lives and that they too would start reading and they would start adjusting as to what your, your truths say. Father, and I know and many, many here know that's not even that hard. It seems like we, we just surrender to you and start reading and start coming to church and being around other like-minded people. <coughs> and we just change. You really do all the hard work. We don't even have to do that much hard work. Thank you. Thank you for loving us enough to know just how incapable we are now you've pretty much done it all for us we just have to get on the bus Father we you know Lord I just lift up this congregation to you and as I pray every Sunday and almost every night for them that you would give them an unquenchable thirst Lord to open up your book to find out who you are 
to, to realize all the promises that you have for your people, all the good things that you have for your people. And then I pray, Lord, that you would, that you would put whatever needs to be put in our hearts to want those promises. We want to realize those promises that you offer. And we can. I love you, Father. I love these people. I place them in your tender care this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.